there guys, Premier. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about um, fixing original finish models. Um, this guy here is uh, from one of the um, mystery full sets, I believe it was for 2014. Um, and he has got a really nice paint job. His markings are really nicely done. He's got a little bit of smudge, but that's nothing too bad that can't be fixed. But um, anyways, one of his major problem is, is that he has got a giant scrape down the front part of his foot. So if you can see it there, that giant mongo scrape, yeah. He's also got a little bit of hoof rub back here, but that's not too bad. But the biggest one is this. So if I were to show him, which I'm planning on, the judge would see this and go, oh my god, you know, and this would probably lower him on the totem pole for scoring. So we need to fix this. Um, there's several ways you could do it. Number one, you can airbrush it. Um, but of course, if you don't know how to use an airbrush, and sometimes things like this is just more hassle than just to paint it by hand. Um, you can do it with pastels, but of course pastels are not always wonderful for this sort of thing. Um, you know, there's numerous ways that you can do it, but today we're just going to be doing it with acrylic paints and matte finish. So, how that's done, I don't know why that was in there, but how it's done is, is you're going to need a pan, you're going to need a really small um, paintbrush, uh, normally, I carry about, God, I don't know, 400 brushes at one point. But this here, this is a size 0. 20 out of 0 for the uh, round company. This is a 3050R. And you can see the company's name there. Um, this I picked up at my local art store, and it was on sale. It was a very nice little brush. Um, it was clearance, so I think I paid like 3 $4 for it, which is really good for a really nice artistic brush. Because this is, it's weighted, it's got a nice, um, just, uh, part here for it, and it's nicely fits in your hand, and you can get really get down in the details. But the the end is starting to get a little bit bristly, so it might be time to replace this. But for today, this is fine. So next thing that we have to determine is the color of our horse. Luckily, this guy here is black, and his foot is gray, so it won't be too hard of a problem to match. But of course, if you have a horse that's Palomino or Bay or something, it's going to be a lot harder to fix things like this without airbrushing um, or even pasteling but for feet and stuff this is usually pretty good now I do recommend that you do understand color charts and the differences on how to mix colors if you haven't done that um, I would start looking up videos on mixing colors and how to get appropriate colors for certain um, shades and then of course with stuff like this it's trial and error so right now when I look at his foot, I can see that it's not really a super light gray, it's relatively dark. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a little bit of my black here and I'm going to put it in and just kind of lightly mix up some stuff. And I'm going to take it on my paintbrush and I'm going to compare it between the two and I'm going to go, mm, no, nah, still too dark. And you got to remember acrylics will dry slightly darker than what you see, usually. So as I look here, it's a little closer, um, but you know, in my opinion, I still think it's a little too dark. So I'm just going to take a little bit more white and try. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and just slowly see if I can touch this little spot up here. And basically you just need to very lightly fill it in. You don't want to glab it on. And you want to make sure that your acrylic paints are uh, watered down um, to about the consistency of milk. You don't want to take acrylic paint straight out of a bottle like this. You just can't do that. It's too thick and you will ruin your model. So don't do that. So with that being said, as you can see, it looks so much better. I mean, you can see the little um, 
line where it was scraped, sorry, it was hailing and I was like, what the heck is that noise? Um, so you can see that it will, you, the little line is scraped, but normally a judge will not see that, so it's not too big of a concern for him. Um, and then, of course, you have two options. You can either leave it like this. Oh, now it's really hailing. Um, <laughs> or you can matte finish it. Now, I do recommend that you do matte finish it um, just because it will keep it permanently on there. But if you don't know how to work with matte finish, I would avoid that step totally because you can ruin your model like really bad if you don't know how to work with matte finish. So it's always better to try this on a trial horse, get your bearings, figure it out, learn color balances and so forth. And pretty soon you'll be able to repair your own models. Um, of course, this method will not work with pastel horses. Um, and you can do the same thing here with oils. Um, it's another really good way because you don't really have to matte finish them because it seals itself. But I'm not going to worry about this little scrape here because he is never going to get washed. But eventually I will matte finish him once it does stop raining. So yeah. But anyways guys, that's a short little video on how to repair uh, models that may have scrapes. Um, remember this only works with airbrushed horses. It does not work with um, like pastel horses. It does not work with, uh, oh gosh, what's the other one? They're, like you can't do this with um, oil-based paints. So like you can't have a horse that was painted in oils and then paint acrylic over the top. Usually they don't blend very well. They just don't look right. So it's always better if you want to do touch-ups to stay with airbrushed models um, that you can do this with uh, your original finish horses. Um, so, but just uh, do small tests, and if you don't like it, wash it off. Okay, thanks for joining me.